Hello everyone, my name is Swati Sharma and I'm a Special Solutions Architect here at AWS. Today I'll be walking you through an overview of the Amazon Connect Flow Designer. I'll also show the different components within the Amazon Connect Flow Designer and demonstrate how to use the designer to create customer flows as well. Before diving into the Amazon Connect Flow Designer, I did want to take a moment to go over flows. So within Amazon Connect, flows define the experience that a customer has from start to end with your contact center. A flow is made up of different blocks that define out each step for the customer interaction, such as playing a prompt or transferring to an agent. The Amazon Connect Flow Designer is what we use to create these flows and set up additional features such as call recordings and conversational analytics. It contains all the blocks that we need to define out our customer experiences and to create our customer flows. As we'll see later on in this video, the Flow Designer also has a drag and drop interface that allows us to quickly and easily create our customer experiences. So let's go ahead and go into the Connect console, look at the permissions needed to access the Flow Designer, see what the designer looks like, and build a quick flow. Let's start off by looking at the permissions that we need to access and create flows within the Amazon Connect console. So going to the left hand side, we'll go down to our Users tab and we'll click on the Security Profiles button. Once that loads, we'll go ahead and go to our admin profile. And then after that, we'll scroll down to the numbers and flow section. We'll open that up and then we'll go down to the flows row. Here we can see the different options we have to give our users access to our flows. Any button that is white is a security option that we can configure, while anything that is grayed out is an option that we can't select. So for example, for flows, we can see that the options we can choose are all, view, edit, create, remove, and publish. These options let us decide which permissions we want our user groups within our Connect instance to have so we can set up our groups to follow the least privileged access. So for example, if we wanted to give a group of the admin users the ability of viewing, editing, and creating a flow, but not the ability to publish it, then we would only select the view, edit, and create radio buttons. But on the other hand, if we wanted to make sure to give another group of our admins the full permissions to access, modify, and to also publish these flows, then we would leave everything as selected. Since we do want to give our current user full access, we'll go ahead and select the radio button under all. This will give us all of the permissions to access the flow designer along with the customer flows that we will create as well. Once our changes have been saved, it'll take us back to all of our security profiles. So from here, let's go ahead and navigate over to the Flow Designer. So we'll go back to the left-hand side menu and hover down to the Routing menu. From here, we'll want to select the Flows option, which will bring up all of our flows. Here we can see the Create Flow button along with the drop-down arrow next to it. If we click the drop-down arrow, it'll show us the different flow types. Each flow type has a different set of blocks that allow us to build customer experiences for that specific flow type. For example, if I'm creating the experience that my customers will have while they wait in a queue, I'll get a different set of blocks than when I'm creating the experience that they'll have when they are on hold. This makes it a lot easier for me to use the specific blocks for that specific customer interaction type. It also allows me to have a much easier UI to navigate as well. For now, let's go ahead and look at the inbound flow. Let's go ahead and select the Create Flow button, which will pop up our flow designer. We'll now use the designer to create a basic inbound flow that allows our callers to call into a phone number, get greeted by a prompt, and then get transferred to an agent. Let's start off with an overview of the flow designer. On the left hand side, we have the blocks that we will use to create our customer interaction. Next to it, we have the grid like area where we'll drag our flows into and connect them to create the customer experience. There's also a small green box on the bottom left hand side that shows our overall flow as well. On the top left hand side, we have the box to enter in our flow name. We'll go ahead and type in our flow name and call our flow Introduction Flow. Once we're done, we'll click anywhere outside the box to save the flow name. Underneath our flow name, we also have the different blocks that we can use to create our flow. The first set of blocks are the Interact blocks. These include blocks that interact with the user, such as the Get Customer Input block. This block gets our customer's information through either DTMF or an interactive bot. There's also the play prompt block, which can play pre-recorded audio files or allow us to enter in text as well. If we enter in text, it is then automatically played to the user in a natural way without any need for integration with other services. Underneath these, we now have the set blocks. These set information and configurations in our flows. 
So for example, we have the set contact attributes block that sets attributes we may collect from the user, such as account ID for verification or an option selected in a menu tree. There's also the set customer queue flow block that sets the queue for the customer to go to when they're transferred to an agent. This allows us to dynamically transfer the customer to the queue that corresponds best to what the customer is looking for. The next set of blocks are the check blocks. These blocks branch based off the information in the flow. So for example, we can check the staffing of the call center and branch to agents if they are available. However, if no agents are available, then we can also play a different prompt saying that no agents are available, or we can also offer a different option to the customer. Underneath the check blocks, we have the analyze blocks that allow us to set our logging behavior, recording, and enable analytics through contact lens as well. This allows us to gain insights to our customer flows, record our customer interactions, and also set up both real-time and historical analyses as well. Next up are our logic blocks. These can be used to distribute calls by percentage or to loop through prompts as well. So if I wanted to send 30% of my calls to one queue, but 70% to another, I can use these blocks to set up that logic. Then we have our integrate blocks. These we can use to integrate connect features such as cases or customer profiles, along with AWS Lambda functions as well. So for example, let's say we wanted to do a data dip to get a specific message that plays only during holidays from a database like Amazon DynamoDB. We could accomplish this by adding in the invoke lambda function block to our flow to trigger the function to get the information that we need from our database. We could then use that information throughout our flow to be able to play the message as needed. And then finally, we have the terminate blocks. These are used to end the customer interaction, such as disconnecting the call. We can also use them to transfer the customer to a queue or to another flow as well. These also help us create cleaner flows. So for example, if I had both Spanish and English speaking flows, I can create two separate flows and then transfer my customers to their preferred language flow. The last thing that I wanted to show on the left-hand side panel is the show additional flow information button. If we click the drop down arrow next to it, we can see that the flow description and the flow type pop up. So let's go ahead and set a quick description for our flow. We'll go ahead and give it a quick description of sales and support queue flow. And once again, once we're done typing, we'll just click anywhere outside the box to save the information. Now that we've gone through the different flow box, let's go ahead and get started with building out a simple flow. We'll create an inbound flow that allows callers to call into a phone number, get greeted by a prompt, and then get transferred to an agent. But before we get started with building out the flow, we're going to go ahead and save the changes that we've made so far. So we'll go to the top right hand corner, hit the save button, hit save once again, and that'll save the current changes for our flow. Now we can go ahead and get started with building out our flow. We'll start off by placing the play prompt block into our flow. So from the flow blocks, we'll go to interact and then click and drag the play prompt block into our flow. In order to connect it with our customer flow, we'll take the arrow from the entry block and drag that to the left hand side indent on the play prompt block. Once we've done that, we can see that the blocks have been connected since if we move around the play prompt block, the arrow stays connected to the block when we do that. Next, we'll click on the block to customize it. For the type of audio, we'll go ahead and select text to speech or te text. And once we've selected that, we'll enter in the following text. Thank you for contacting us today. Please hold while I transfer you to an agent. Now we'll give our block a name. We'll go to the top part of our block and type in introduction prompt in the block name. Then we'll go ahead and click save at the bottom right hand corner and this will save our block. Now we'll set up the queue transfer. So from set, we're gonna go ahead and scroll down and select the set working queue block and drag that to the right hand side of the play prompt block. We'll then connect both of the outputs of the play prompt block to this new block. For this flow, we'll connect the error block to our set working queue block. However, in an actual production setting, you would want to make sure that your flow has proper error handling set up as well. Once we do that, we'll go ahead and open up the set working queue block to select the queue that we want to transfer the customer to. For now, we'll select the basic queue and then click the save button. Next, we'll add in our transfer to queue block. We'll go under terminate and drag the transfer to queue block to the right hand side of the set working queue block. Then we'll connect both of the outputs of the previous block to it. Finally, we'll drag in the disconnect block to the right hand side of the transfer to queue block. We'll now connect that block to the transfer to queue block.
And with that, we build our basic flow that greets our customers and then transfers them to an agent. Let's first zoom out so we can see the entire flow. All right, now let's go ahead and make sure that our changes are saved and published. So once again, we'll go to the top right hand corner, hit save, and then hit save one more time. After that, we'll go ahead and publish the flow by hitting the publish button. Once we get the success message, we can also click the drop down arrow next to latest and see the time that the flow was both saved and published. This is also really helpful for making changes to the flow. If something doesn't work the way that we want it to, all we need to do to go back to a previously saved version is to click any of the versions below. The next component that I wanted to show here is the search bar. So in the middle of the page, we can type in the search bar to find blocks within our flow. This also works for text that we type into the blocks as well. So for example, if I type in thank you, it'll show us the play prompt block that contains that text. This is really helpful for a large flow, so instead of scrolling through the flow to find a particular block, I can just type the information here and it'll automatically pop up all the blocks that contain the information. Next to the search bar, we have a few other actions as well. So for example, we have our undo button, which not only undoes the actions within the flow, but also allows us to see the list of actions we've taken so far to create the flow. Next to that, we have our redo button, followed by our cut button, then our copy button, and then finally our paste button. Next to that, we have our select all button, which just selects everything within our flow. If we hit that once again, it'll just deselect all the flows as well. And then next to that, we also have the delete button. Finally, we also have a note button, which allows us to create notes within our flow. So for example, if I wanted to create a note that reminds me to update my introduction prompt, I would just drag that into the flow and then type in update introduction prompt as a reminder to myself. The last thing that I wanted to talk about is the bottom right hand corner of the flow designer. This contains the overall flow. We can also use it to look around our flow by clicking the green rectangle and dragging it around our flow. This will show us the different parts of our flow. We can also click the button to go back to the entry point of the flow as well. We can also minimize it by hitting the drop down arrow. And with that, we've covered the different components of the flow designer. Now that our flow is live, we have successfully created and published a flow using the flow designer. We were able to drag and drop the blocks we needed to easily and quickly create the flow in the designer, connect the blocks together, and then save and publish the flow as well. We can use the designer to further update the flow with additional features and capabilities as well. You can refer to the following links to learn more about creating flows, along with the different types of flows and blocks that you can use to create your own personalized customer experiences. Thank you so much for watching this video.